production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes, right here on the Game Fire Network. We are almost live from the year 1944, bringing you episode number 51, the first official Opposing Fronts show, video show. It's going to be awesome, it's going to be great. We've had a bunch of beta, sh uh, beta stuff that we've shown to you guys, but we are now on our first official Opposing Fronts retail version, and uh, the good news as of today, actually, is that uh, we have potentially the beta patch, the last beta patch that did not make it into retail, may be arriving to retail to reintroduce the good old infantry combat system. That sounds good. Good news. Just come out today as of the recording here on Thursday. But let's jump into the game. The can opener versus Espes... Es... Es... Espes... Something e like that. E-S-P-S-Y. So we'll just call him yeah. E-S-P. And then, of and, course, uh, my yeah. venerable co-host, Vittensby, again, welcome to the program. Playing as the can opener yes, in this one. So, uh, yeah, I figured I was, when we were talking about a match, I was like, you know, I played for the first show a year ago, and that was the first show of COA, so maybe I could do that So for the for opposing fronts. Uh, anyways, this was a pretty long, exciting game on Ingeville with a rather unconventional uh, type thing. Lots of explosions, lots of crazy teching patterns going on left and right. Uh, lots of good stuff. Uh, quick uh, music update. Uh, more pork. I think everyone needs a little pork in their life. Uh, I got the music trivia right. Uh, the band was the editors and the uh, album was the back room. So uh, not listening to anything right now, but uh, before we get this started, I just wanted to do the quick Vinsby strategy of the week, which really all it is is it's an Ingeville strategy. Well, let's, 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 let's jump right at, well, Let's talk about it during the very opening phases of it here because it'll be slow as very it always well. is. So um, well. we're at the five-second mark for those of you following along at the home game. We're going to start in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. All right, we're all synced up. Now, uh, just like uh, we should mention that in the audio show, we were going to get to this uh, strategy of the week, and we just ran over time. We had, we had, we were already at like 100, an hour and 10 minutes. So let's uh, go ahead. Give us the strategy of the week, the British on Angaville. What did we call this yeah, one? Yeah, British switch strategy. Basically, the general idea is, is you want to get a quick lieutenant, uh, cap the fuel really fast uh, with your first Tommy squad, which you'll see what I'm doing right now. Then you want to bring your lieutenant, which doesn't have a movement penalty, to cap the munitions. Quickly build up, your, pick up your truck. You won't have anything capped, so you're not really losing any resources except your plus, plus five fuel. Move your truck onto the fuel so you can fast tech. And basically, you build another Tommy squad and another lieutenant, and then you switch sides with uh, the double and try to attack the strat point on Angaville. And I've been using that, that strategy. Um, now, wait, did you say you're putting the truck on the fuel? fuel? Yeah, I believe okay. in this one I was putting it on the fuel. Um, I mean, you, there's the option that you can get speed governors. I wouldn't recommend it because the whole point of putting it on the fuel is to fast tech. Um, pretty conventional start coming from the Axis player. I actually don't really recall this replay as, as much as I would like to, but I know it was uh, pretty interesting, um, and a lot of people liked it. I actually posted this one on the forums. And, uh, Good job. The truck, of course, running over everything in sight on its way. Well, that's what it does best. One thing to <laughs> note about the truck that I've been thinking about doing lately is... Uh, the second truck that you get, the field support truck, is pretty cheap, and I've been thinking about maybe using it uh, as like a as a just a half track initially, and trying to set up a base on like say the other side of Angaville. It doesn't matter if it's on a strap point or what. Um, we'll see. But in this case, I decided to to do the Angaville switch, I believe. So uh, one interesting thing to note about the recon squad is they have added line of sight, but apparently they have a a combat penalty, which yeah. not many people know. Uh -huh. Yeah, so getting a lot of recon squads will hurt your combat penalty, of course, unless you have a ton of munitions which you can use on their snipe ability. Because um, right. on, the, on the lower size, smaller sized um, German squads, either the Grenadiers or the Stormtroopers or the Panzer Grenadiers, um, that snipe ability can really cut down their firepower, at least with the, uh, you know, in, in general. So now we actually, uh, oh wow, there you go, nice, nice retreat with the uh, lieutenant there. You never want yeah. him in combat by himself ever, no. ever, 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 ever. He's very <laughs> expensive. That's like yeah. losing an early, um, 
I don't know. What would it be equivalent to? I guess losing an early probably uh, a pie or, or something. Pie. I guess, but yeah, it costs probably an too, early so. squad. Yeah. 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 So there's the uh, second Tommy squad, and I'll be more than likely producing a uh, another lieutenant. And uh, when you do this, you probably want to keep the lieutenants on the other side of the hedge. Um, yeah. Or put them in the building, that ever popular uh, Ingeville building that's just north of the one in the south. Um, the one thing that really shuts us <laughs> that shuts us down cold is, is having an MG right there. So uh, I believe he employed a, a, per a perfect counter for it, so to speak. Yeah. And so I just decided to go the other route. And and <laughs> it's interesting to point out, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people that are listening to the show or watching the show that probably have played extensive opposing fronts beta, but not a lot of people have. So we're going to try and point out a lot of the new interesting things that, you know, may not be obvious at first glance and one of them is you can stack your lieutenants um and if you have two lieutenants next to your squads it actually some of the bonus doubles it doesn't they don't both doesn't completely double but it, it increased like the second lieutenant has like diminishing returns where the second lieutenant adds about half the normal bonus that the that if you had just one lieutenant adds so you you do get about 150 percent effectiveness if you have two lieutenants um, right. versus one gives you you know 100 percent effectiveness by means of one lieutenant being 100%. And wow, that is a very fast field support truck. Yeah. So Having a plus tech. 26 fuel that early really helps. Yeah, so in this one I don't go for quite the, uh, <laughs> the Ingeville switch. I played so many darn games last weekend. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, you never want to yeah. have your, uh, your machine gun miss that first barrage. But... As uh, we were just talking about, the machine gun very, very uh, hard to kill by the Americans early in the game with the recon squad that the British have can be fairly easy to snipe down. Now, it does cost a lot of munitions to do that. Is it 35 per snipe? Is that what it is? Or is it 20, 25? 25. Uh, one thing that I'm not really doing correctly here, although I can understand my, my reasoning, um, just to keep my lieutenant around, but you really want to use the lieutenant uh, in situations like this to cap extra points. Like, I could, could have been decapping the plus 16 munitions right yes. now. So uh, you've got to keep that in mind that your lieutenant can cap. And he and caps just really... about as fast as regular squads, too. It's not much of a penalty. Exactly. Right. So you really, you really, want, to, uh, you re really want to keep that in mind. Um, and we do have a Tier 2 coming up. He just escalated his skirmish phase. And uh, one thing I was mentioning was, like, at, at this particular point in the game... Now, now you know, after playing a little bit more, I would have probably got speed governors and moved my field support truck to the right side because uh, I already had all my forces there. And it, it there's really, you know, there, there's a penalty to it. Obviously, it's not linked, but uh, you can, you can, you know, still produce units there as far as I know. <laughs> yes. Pretty sure you can set your field support truck down if you just control the territory. It doesn't have yeah. to be linked. No, it doesn't have to be linked um, right. as far as I know. They're, they're all governed by the same thing. And this is a very popular strategy. Put a slit trench in front of your, uh, right next to your HQ, basically, which allows right. you to, because that's a situation where a lot of times trenches can hurt because you don't want. A little repair want, job on the trench there. Yeah, a little bit. I saw that. A lot of times <laughs> trenches can be very bad because, uh, because if the enemy takes hold of them, it's very hard to run them out. So, but in this case, a trench right next to your main, you know, HQ means that you're probably not going to be losing that trench anytime soon. If they're coming close to your HQ, you'll probably know about it and you'll be able to stick somebody in there. And as you can see, trenches are very powerful. Just wipe the floor with that MP44 Volk squad. Exactly. The thing... Oh, God, if I lose my lieutenant here, I'm going to cry. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Oh, I, I have a nasty habit of doing this is exactly what you do not want to have happen. You not paying attention. Yeah. Oh no, there it no, he's not gonna make it. He can't Oh yeah. plus, plus seven yeah. XP though. P out completed. Yeah. I, I I seriously need to get better with my uh with my uh <laughs> my lieutenants and Tommy uh, my lieutenants and yeah. captains. It's it's tough microing them with everything else because they're so you know so vulnerable, really. Yeah, I for I forgot that after they moved that building, I think I was playing old school. You know, I didn't really used to reach the. Uh, I didn't used to reach that VP. So. Oh right, right, right. They did. This yeah. building used to be up between these trees, basically. Yeah. 
and here's the uh, all all o- overpowered 25 pounder. Yeah, slowly <laughs> Piazza- being built here. Yeah, the 25 pounder must be really. Um, and my phone is here. You go. 25 so, pounder must be really easy to spam on this map when you because I mean it costs 70 fuel and that's hard to get unless of course you're sitting on a plus 16. Right, you re- you really want to uh, consider your options here. Um, if you want to get a field support uh, armored command truck and just tech up, um, or if you want to get a 25 pounder, I mean it's it's really up to you. I feel like uh, though that the field support truck is kind of where Wehrmacht Tier 4 was. I mean, as far as I can tell, most people are saying, you know, Cromwells, are they really worth building sort of a thing. I mean, what do they cost? They cost 70 fuel, I think, the Cromwells? Yeah, they're pretty expensive. I, I personally prefer the Stuart. Uh, there's there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, Stuart, for a quick tech strat like this, you, uh, it's, Stuart's really just invaluable because it can, you know, with the canister shots, oh, you can yeah. really just own every every infantry and it's actually very good against light vehicles and against martyrs uh, it's pretty pretty good to flank them and you can take out stugs with it as well so there's really there's really no downside to having steward the first four, 25 pound ah there it is do you feel that the uh the steward canister shot is a little bit overpowered at all uh, because mm. i mean i've seen situations where it's completely destroyed an entire squad in one shot like that game that we actually had a couple of weeks ago I, I've seen it kill <laughs> goodles and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it, I don't think it's quite overpowered. It's still a lot of munitions, but you really. I, I mean, it's like a strafing run, right? Sometimes it does miracles, and sometimes it, it doesn't really kill it. You just got to be more wary when you're around Stuart to really gotcha. just kind of, kind of spread out your stuff more. Now check this out. We've got an exact split down the Angleville Road. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. And if, if you notice what some people may not understand, the green on your mini-map is, uh, is your, your captain because he uh, gives bonuses to infantry that are and emplacements that are within the, uh, the zone that he is currently in. Oh yeah. wow! Exploiting the uh, the terrible yeah. hole in the middle of e- exploiting the it base. T- terribly. To be honest, I could yeah. have had another squad there, and uh, right now I'm dropping something onto there. Did you yeah. see that green smoke? There yeah. we go. I'm dropping the uh, 25 pounder on the it. The 25 pounder gives green smoke now, or is that just to allies? Uh, I guess it was green smoke. That's really weird. I, never, I don't think I've ever seen that when I was playing the game. Man, I have bad luck with my. My I didn't squad. use a lot of artillery. And uh, here comes my armored command truck. Yeah. This is pretty bad. This is one of the reasons that people were saying, uh, were crying nerf on the 25 pounder. Well, you can see it really gets owned pretty fast by Panzer Shrek, so. Oh, yeah, it definitely does, but again, wow, it does. But again, with all the defensive advantages that the British get, if you had had those squads back at base, would they have been able to defend it, you know? Is that inspired right. assault? You just it is defensive? inspired assault. Oh. And there goes my 25-pounder. He's going after the truck now, too. I... That was an expensive 25-pounder. But uh, how did you get the... Oh, you used the Piats on the building. Nice. Okay. Yeah. To finally get the Wehrmacht there. It was a costly base rush. It didn't yeah. really go quite the way I wanted. Well, it I think to. it was sort of an even trade. Uh, not not a great even trade, I guess, because 70 fuel versus like 15 fuel for the Wehrmacht. But uh, yeah, well, I wasn't exactly anticipating uh, that counterattack. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured he would retreat personally. Gotcha. I thought I'd also have an extra squad down there, so it would be a a final base rush. Um, I did see that he, I believe I saw his Sturm Armory going up, so I, I, I'm a little concerned at this point after that happened, so I think I uh, decided to build something for my Armor Command truck uh, to counter what I thought was going to be um, you know, a Puma or a, a Stug coming out. Yeah, um, so you can see here squads that are actually covered by the defense are circled their their thing is circled in white their boxes you see he walks over it's no longer circled in white well actually the the captain went with him there so the captain gives defensive bonuses like we mentioned um received accuracy um bonuses i think 
to the squads yeah. that are in that territory, as well as to emplacements. It gives a health bonus, like 150% health bonus to squads. Inspired right. Assault on MP44 Volks against uh, squads in the open. That's going to be pretty bad. Wow. I can see this going very not, bad. You do not want to attach your uh, your captain to... Uh, he doesn't oh, retreat God. with the squads, or did he, he just take a while? <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, really with the captain, you should be keeping him uh, quite far in the territory, but in the background. Yeah. And here comes another charge in. Is that, uh, oh no, those are Piaz. I thought that was rifle grenades we had there. So we have two recon squads here. Are you try or what was the thinking behind getting a second recon squad instead of, say, a Bren team? Instead of a what? A Bren, a a Bren, Bren team. A Bren? Uh, I really don't like the Bren, to be honest. Maybe I should use it more. I just, uh, it gets really hampered by small arms fire, and that's just kind of disturbing to me. Well, the but, Bren uh, is significantly more powerful against infantry than a recon squad, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I meant, me I meant not the Bren carrier, the Bren weapon upgrade on the squad. Bren light machine gun. Light machine gun, sorry. Uh, that's I, that's I, what I meant. I mean,. I got a, instead I got just got a steward and a Cromwell. Ooh. So. Oh dear Nebo God! In, incoming death. Where's he dropping that on your base? Oh yeah! You know wow, that's a pretty long it. range. I forgot that the Nebo had that long a range. Oh God! Oh, that was really unlucky. It was so amazingly inaccurate from being that far away, but he still managed to land one on your squads there. Yeah. Here comes the Stuart and Cromwell base. Whoa! That was a canister shot, wasn't it? That was a canister, but you know what? That damn Panzer Shrek still got me. Yeah. <laughs> He's chasing it. Did, and did that it is drop why the Nebel Warfare makes me want to throw up. God damn, that Nebel Warfare. What's it doing? Well, oh, your I squad's dropping. Oh, all my again. guys again. How did he know you were coming? He just dropped it on your prob probable approach area? I'm guessing. You know, in all honesty, this guy's Nebel Warfare usage is uh, extremely good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see what kind of damage the Cromwell does. Actually, not bad. Killed two Grenadiers in one shot, so it seems yeah. to be... Uh, it, even though it has a one against infantry, I don't know why it has a one against infantry and a one against tanks. It's like, what the hell is the Cromwell good for, then? <laughs> I, I would compare it to, to a, an M10 against infantry, really. Um, so what? It's we'll just it's it. just a light vehicle killer, then? Well, you already got the Stuart for that, don't you? Yeah. You know, uh, like we said, it's mainly there. It has pretty long range, and I think it's mainly there just to be a finishing touch and to, to kite infantry. Yeah. Just to make it a little bit harder to uh, kill stuff. Because if he gets all... Okay, so we got commandos here, too. we got gliders available. Yeah, and level one veteran, see, on my captain as well as my... Uh, as well as my uh, oh, lieutenant. Yeah? So I can use a rogue charge. The main thing I want to use that Cromwell for right now is to flush out that MG, but... Uh, See, it says one more. against infantry, but it's killed a lot of stuff in one hit. Yeah, and more Nebel Warfers going off. He, like, knows exactly where to place it. Like, I just don't get it, man. Look at that. Like, wow. <laughs> oh, God. He almost killed your captain, your lieutenant, too. He, he killed my cap. He killed everything. Look at that. He just oh, killed wow, it was on fire. Oh, because yeah, that's just... right. It, it, it has a fire after effect. I forgot they added that. Yeah, he just killed everything I had. <laughs> and did you lose the tank up here somewhere? Where'd it go? No, but, I mean... Oh, it's it... down here. Yeah. You decided everything... to say, finally say, screw these freaking Nibelwerfers? Everything might be relative, but uh, when you got one infantry section guy in an infantry section and your captain, hmm. yeah, that's, now did uh, you get the increased range with the line of sight when you upgrade to get the commander on the tank? Because it seemed like you were firing really far away. I, I don't have I didn't have that on my wow. tank. Wow, that's pretty impressive. It has a long line of sight anyway. Yeah, at this point, you know, I was really expecting some a stug to try to run up and basically just own all my things. So I'm really trying to get out of Firefly. Um, now, will it help me against, you know, Grenadiers and stuff like that? I, I, I don't think so. But, uh, my only complaint about the Chromo Command Tank is it's pretty expensive, and, you know, its bonuses are great, but it has absolutely no offensive capabilities. I mean, at least with the Captain and the Lieutenant, you do have some offensive capabilities, and because you'll see I just dropped a glider on the right side, yeah. and uh, using that in combination with my captain, which, um, yeah, it's, 
Oh yeah, those Sten yeah. guns. Yeah, for the win, baby. Destroy everything. <laughs> did you just shoot your own glider by accident? Yeah, I did. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason those glider troops cost 560 er, manpower. Yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. They're already very powerful. They're basically like rangers with, uh, rangers with MP40s. Or, sorry, ne MP40s. Evil Wolfers going off yeah, on the, uh... God, Evil Wolfers making me want to vomit. That was a little bit and of smoke I, there, I saw that. You got yeah, I just use that to get close. Smoke, so I can move in to nade it. Did he just nade? <laughs> yeah, I just, he His naded own... me while I naded him. Oh, okay, that was one of your glider troops. It looked like it was coming from his Grenadier squad that he naded that MG. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can't can't really afford to get uh, Piots right now, which is what I would really like to do, and just repair up my tanks. Um, they're kind of sitting there doing nothing, and uh, at this yeah, point yeah. I kind of realized... Because you, lost, you lost the sappers already, right? Yeah, I lost in, everything in I had by the double needles. Damn. Yeah, those things are really, really, really powerful now. Really powerful. And this, this would be a perfect example of when you should switch over your, one of your uh, armored command trucks or your field support truck to the other side of, of, of Angaville. I mean, I know I have like, the glider HQ, but as you saw, I mean, it, if you click on it, I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, it's, it's health, down to yeah. about half health. So uh, switching over, being able to reinforce it, something a little more permanent, something that's not going to get owned by Nebel Warfers, is... Uh, would have been a smarter idea. Also, I could have used my Cromwell better at this point and uh, attacked that OP with it. Yeah. And uh, so I picked up his uh, heavy machine gun and placed it in that uh, that building right there, which I'm hoping will do good. But uh, you know, in, hi in hindsight, it w definitely would have been better to put it in the uh, southern, more southern building. Uh, it definitely would have held held on to my territory, stop this advance here. Um, so. No Dear God. Wow. I shiver when it, and there's more inspired assault. Oh, Cromwell misses terribly, unfortunately. The first shot was okay. Oh, wow, but look at that. Very nice. Just a massive amount. I, I, I shudder to think of what the commandos would be like if they had two lieutenants to back them up and give them even more powerful attacking features. Well, the reason why they're doing so great is because, really because of the uh, the captain at level two yeah. bed, so... He uh, makes him very it. difficult to kill. Yeah. That uh, that twenty, 20 plus twenty six observation post has helped him out a lot. It's really allowed him to uh, you know afford for treks and uh, definitely when you're playing against British, you know, evil warfers for the win and you know an observation post so you can get uh, shreks and whatever you like. Uh, the munitions are pretty important. More evil warfers going off every and time I hear that. Instead of leaving, your captain runs in there. Oh no, he's double veterancy. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, there's a good example of why you should never link your uh, your yeah. captain in because he didn't. Re you couldn't. You couldn't give him a direct order to leave. Well, he blew up his own OP in exchange. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and here so comes they... another glider troop. Nice. Oh no, it's the same one. No, it's a different one. Nice gliders. Nah, I got an extra squad. My commando. Cheat commandos, oh, all right, wow. They're still holding up really well even without the uh, captain here, you can see, against MP40 Volks, but they should, because they're at least twice as expensive. Right. Yeah, I was really unhappy with my tech choice at this point. The Cromwell and the armored command tank, I mean, the Cromwell command tank, it's just not doing anything for me at this point. I can't can't really touch Panzer Shrek with that stuff. But. Someone who watched this uh, replay, you know, was like, "Well, you probably should have got a Stewart at somewhere along the line." Like at this point, you know, and, and came in and canister did a nice shot. canister shot. And uh, I, I have to definitely agree with that person. Uh, that that would have helped out quite a bit. Yeah. And we do have triple Nebelwerfers <laughs> now. Is he still bombing you? Yeah, he's bombing your main base with that. Yeah, I'm not really too concerned about. I don't about like this music at all. There we go. And there we go, that MG Much actually better. is worth something. The VPs, Bridger. We've been missing that. They're about oh, dead wow, even. Yeah. Three, they are about dead three, even. Four. Yeah. So now certainly some time you should grab some sappers to make those tanks worthwhile. Agreed. Even if it's only to flank the side where he doesn't have his Panzer Shreks. 
How much manpower do I have now, anyways? 123. Yeah. Nade. Here comes another double Nebel Warfare on the left. You just missed a nade that shoot up pretty nicely down there. On the right hand side. Oh, oh my god, you're gonna lose a whole recon squad on the left. You're not paying attention, unfortunately. Look at that. Well, nope, I was doing maybe a not. Maybe pretty, a big pretty big offensive on the right. Yeah. Pretty even trade-off. Oh, you got Panzer Shrek. Nice. Not that he's been it, using any armor yet, but yeah, he's taking a tier had, four. Someone had posted in one of the replays, you know, that they were surprised that, that I was, you know, I had talked, I think, last week on the show about, you know, me not playing as, I was going to play Panzer Elite, and, you know, I would never touch the British or something like that, and, uh, well, what can I say, you know, the British just play so damn different, and Panzer Elite, to me, feels like a little bit more of the same, and we have a fourth Nebel Warfare out on the field. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, they're, they're, they're the thing that's doing the most damage for them. All the Panzer Shrek Grenadiers and stuff hasn't done shit. <laughs> look at the suppression range on that, though. I mean, wow, those guys yeah. were... I think they really overdid the buff just a little bit. I, I Yeah. I, it, it's a problem against against the British, and... Uh, <sighs> At least it doesn't do damage to buildings that much. And we have a Panzer Command out, Bridger, so we yeah. saw Tier 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, he doesn't have tier one anymore unless he's got Volks hanging around. There's one Volks. Grenadiers. I think he's only got that one Volk squad now. Yeah. And I was getting pretty sick of these naval warfers at this point. <laughs> Is he gonna He's I still naval warfare in your the... base? On the MG up there. Yeah, he is. Uh, how I can't, the hell does he know? Oh, he's just he's just randomly naval warfare in your base and I think you know. He's luck getting some lucky shots there. HMG commandos. Now would be we a good time Knight's to pop cross. the smoke. Oh. Knight's Cross. He's building Knight's there. Cross now, huh? Yep. No captain to retreat to, unfortunately. That's kind of a cool. I got to use that captain retreat more often. Yeah. I'll find a better way to use that. Now yeah, let's I really see. Had to... Go ahead. I, I'm just curious to see how the Knight's Cross hold up against the commandos here. King Tiger, baby. <laughs> oh, wow. He's that far into the tech tree. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Forward company, come on. And, I didn't realize uh, yeah. he was going down terror. I didn't even see... I've seen Inspired Assault, but I didn't see any... Oh, that's right. They switched Firestorm and Propaganda. So we, yeah. he would have used Propaganda if he had used it at all. Yeah, the King Tiger is really slow. You're going to see on the right-hand side, I just laid down a demo charge right by the VP. Yeah. So you're able up. to uh, blow that up whenever you want. He can't see it. There it is. Right. Oh. Just fragged Almost the got him. Oh, did get him. That's a lot of CP, uh, XP there. Oh, God, a King Tiger. Now, what somebody pointed out on the forums when we were talking about the Ultra Decryption, anything you see on the left here, you know, that says, you know, King Tiger built or Tier 4 researched or Vet 1 on infantry research or things like that, anything that appears on the left-hand side will be visible to your opponent if they have the Ultra Decryption. So that's that's mostly what the Ultra Decryption does, which can be very useful, because if you had known this King Tiger was out, you know, 30 seconds earlier, maybe that would have given you 30 seconds more with which to get, you know, anti-armor available. And the same thing mm -hmm. if you'd seen, you know, Tier 4, then you would have been, oh crap, maybe he's building Panzers, or maybe you would have had, before that came out, even more anti-armor situations, so... I think this is the type of situation where people talk about, you know, the King Tiger being a little kind of screwy, you know, at being free. And even though it's reduced his manpower down to 156, um, you know, the game was flowing pretty normal. It was a pretty even, uh, despite him getting four Nebel Warfers, which, uh, yeah, I'm just staring at those and how much death they've caused. Can't you, you know, you can see when you're playing uh, how much they kill. Yeah, I see it. Uh, one of them's killed 11, 6, 11, and 0. This is probably the newest one. But two of them killed 11, the other one killed 6. 6, yeah. And uh, so basically the only real counter I have right now is just the odds. Um, and they're not doing anything against that frontal armor. Look at that. Jesus. That thing's even more powerful than the, than the t Terror Tiger Ace, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I just got Firestorm right now, and uh, unfortunately, you know, my uh, my tanks are really low. I, I never never uh, 
felt like I had the manpower, so you know. It gets, oh, he's gets got flank speed. He's trying early. to run around. And... Oh, but a destroyed engine puts an end to that plan. <laughs> oh man. The PS are interesting. I mean, they they shoot straight up into the air and then sort of fall onto their target. It's a really weird way that they're fired. Now, I can't believe it. You had a Piot and a Panzer Shrek in, inside of a trench fighting the King Tiger for at least 30 seconds. And it's got like, uh, oh, you've got the scratch on my paint, y'all. I don't know why yeah. they were Austrian, but you know. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, the Nebel. I assume that's a Firefly. Maybe it's coming up soon. Quadruple Nebel Barrage. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a Firefly. Actually, I don't think it's being built yet. The lads have received their decoy smelter. Ah, now you've got decoy and artillery, so that means you've got ultra and all the other things now. Yeah. Here comes artillery. Or is it just decoy smoke and artillery? What the hell? It's both. I use both. Not very effectively. Got a little bit off there on that chipping damage. Mainly just trying to get him the hell out of there. Um, I really uh, you no can't use that through the fog of war, right? Now would be a good time to hit those Nebelwerfers. They're all in range. <laughs> Stop spoiling the next 20 minutes of the replay. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't. Yeah, so... That's a good place to bring your infantry back to, though, to reinforce them, because they <laughs> yeah. were just getting killed you know, around your HQ. It, it's uh, one one thing you can you can say in hindsight was it would have been much better for me to at least relocate that truck slightly back more. Yeah. Uh, if I didn't want to change sectors with it, I mean, there's some key key mistakes which I, I you know I definitely learned uh, learned from in this particular replay. Um, I think I kept my trucks way too stagnant. I shouldn't have had all three of them in the same location. You know, I definitely could have been more mobile when I controlled the entire right side. Um, you know, there's been one pioneer capping the entire right back, so, oh, God. Is he dropping it on that machine gun team? No, oh, I'm pretty sure he's dropping it on all my guys by the strap point. That's How the did thing, he know like, he was, they were there? I don't no, even okay, know no, 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 he's dropping on the glider at the top there. Oh, uh, yeah. Not very effective at killing buildings or structures. I'm pretty sure a glider counts. That's one of those, too. And here comes the Firefly, me yeah, thinking I'm all... Yeah, let's see how useful it's going to be against the King Tiger. Yeah, got I mean, rid of the ne one of the Nebels. There you go. Now, uh, this Drop is... the decoy already on the, uh, and the regular Oh, RD. wow, look at that. Fire to salt, Sherman Firefly versus... Oh, no, fire. this is not a good situation to have the Firefly in. Good idea, back it out. Don't show your rear. Oh, Come on, geez. prove that I have at least a little bit of micro. Yes, I ran him over with a British tank. <laughs> I got one guy. <laughs> <laughs> I see him, he's there. Oh no, main gun destroyed. They've got to get out. <sighs> no. And the Nibelwerfers live. <laughs> oh no, this is, this is bad for you right now, man. We've got commandos with Piots and, <laughs> and Panzer Shreks. Yeah. And well, another Piot on the ground if you had another squad. And incoming Nebel. Oh. Uh, one thing to note is, I mean, there's certain times in when you when you play this game and you're like, there's no way I'm gonna win on Annihilation. So, I think it was around this time, you know, that I just said, you know what, I better just try to hold the VPs. So, uh, and of course, with those Nebels, you, <laughs> I'm lucky I, if I can even get a cap off. Just lost another squad. He's being very conservative with his King Tiger, which is probably smart, but he really needs to get it uh, fixed here. Yeah, you know? I was. He hasn't had any pioneers really on it at all. Yeah, he he didn't he didn't repair it. Um, I think that that's definitely something he could improve on. But uh, keeping that thing repaired, and I think he's being he's being a little too passive, a little too. I mean, I know it's a slow unit. I mean, look, it's moving, going to be moving down a road in a second. It's a uber slow unit, but still, that thing. I mean, he probably could have rolled me already. Yeah, I, I mean, think he might have been able to if he wasn't quite so reluctant to take out the HQ there. Now, what you might be missing, though, with all your anti-tank abilities is a, uh, a lieutenant to increase the accuracy and reduce the re reload time of those piots. Decoy and regular already coming down. So he doesn't know exactly which area of any of that is. Oh, no, there's an Ostwind in there. That's bad news, too. Yep. And your guy's retreating right through the artillery. Go, guy, go. There he goes. <laughs> go, go. 
Yeah. Go, go, Commando Everybody. Rangers. Wait, that doesn't make what, any sense. Against the uh, the Tiger, uh, King Tiger, what I could have done was maybe got a, a squad of of Tommies, but uh, and got a buttoned the uh, King Tiger. Yeah, brand them and, up, yeah. And used my range advantage, and I'm getting owned in the base. Oh, yeah, Inspired um, Assault is destroying that squad. Uh, dropping more arty down there. I think that was just decoy already though. Yeah, looks like he has it. a V1. More Nibbles coming in on the right. Oh. An entire unit is KIA. Ah, uh, <laughs> Oswin finally got the MG in the building there. Yeah. But uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so we have a V1 available for 150 munitions, which will be interesting to see if he might use it on my HQ. Wink, wink. Yeah. Uh, now you've uh, got tons of munitions, too. I mean, you could be dropping this artillery all day. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't seem like it comes down quite fast enough to really be useful. Oh, nice. 17 pounders have a huge range. It's ridiculous. Unfortunately, they uh, yeah. were able to destroy it there. But I think that you got the right idea with that. Especially since... Yeah, well, so, the, the, the Nebel Warfers don't seem to be able to kill buildings at all. So right. I think if you build a 17 pounder, it'd be completely safe from that. And you got armor piercing, which is probably about the only thing the British are going to be able to do to stop this King Tiger. Yeah. They don't I have... believe he is, he is repairing it now. Uh, here comes the V1 on uh -oh. my HQ, I believe. Oh, dear. Right oh. when the guy retreats. Oh, jeez. Not good. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Where did that guy go? I see his, I see his shadow. There it is. I see Holy his little burning crap. corpse. <laughs> wow, that was bad news. So now, how do you call in another HQ truck? Oh, that's right there. It's it, right there. It Replacement just costs four hundred. Holy crap! Ah, uh, that's cheap, man. Compared to the, you know, I would rather call in an extra truck. Be honest for 400 manpower, and notice I don't really get any manpower reduction. Yeah, like that's you weird. Do. Uh, I don't know if that's a bug. I, I don't think it's a bug. It might be because I have an HQ, HQ glider that I, on the right side that I'm not, uh, I'm not, not losing uh, manpower Maybe. though. And here comes the truck. Okay, this pissed me off hardcore. You know, after 35 minutes of being bombarded with Nebel Warfers, getting my HQ V1, somehow, I don't know what the deal is, but. You know, I have this bug with a, it upgraded minesweepers twice on my Piat, and now I got I made a Bofors 40 millimeter gun, which is absolutely useless against the King, King oh, Tiger. Oh, you meant to build? Oh no, you meant to build an AT gun and you got a yeah. 40 millimeter. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Spoils the whole thing, doesn't it? I guess so. <laughs> Listen, one of those shots might penetrate and shoot the driver. No, nah, it's only against vehicles. I know. It does a little bit of damage against infantry, too. It's like a little, like, flak. See there, right almost. here. Crack infantry completed. So that it just It is doing a little bit of damage. A little bit. The ultra decryption just told you that they've got uh, level 2 veterancy on the infantry, which is something yeah. that, uh, you know, it's nice to know, for sure, before which it, on they Knight, show up at your Knight's base. Cross is just, uh... Obliterating disgusting. you? Disgusting. Yeah, I am with Inspired Assault, and has grenades now, I believe. Oh yeah, that's right. The Knights Cross do have the grenades. Yeah, now, imagine. What is, it, is that a tier two that they get those, or something? I'm uh, not entirely sure, but imagine if that was an AT gun. I think I would have been able to hold my ground a little bit better. Oh yeah, at least would have been, uh, damaged the King Tiger a lot more. Yeah. Now what the heck's gonna happen here? We've got decapping all of the uh, the VPs no here. Yeah, notice the uh, VP is he's at 78. So yeah, it's pretty really low, but he's taking them all on. back now. Uh oh, there's some regular artillery from you, I think. Forcing yeah. a retreat. Oh, jeez. Piat commandos, he's going. Oh, he turns the front armor to you. Now you're in trouble. And I order you to charge, men! Charge to your death like there never was. You're not even shooting. <laughs> I you haven't seen anything shoot. 
You gotta get those ass shots. Wow, baby. yeah, look at that. Holy crap! No, now the Piats are doing ass. something. <laughs> I guess it's just that super front armor, it just doesn't penetrate at all. Yeah, pretty much. Come on, baby. Damage engine! Shrek, you got a Panzer Shrek and a Piat in that squad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, artillery! On the on the pioneers, he's driving in the wrong direction. Well, I guess not the wrong direction. There it is. Just... It's out of control. It's going crazy. There it is. Wow. That's a big victory. Holy shit. Yeah. I did not expect. I don't know how the hell. I guess it's. That's the way you kill a king tiger. I thought it looks so inv invulnerable until you just hit it in the ass and then boom. Well. <laughs> opens right up. I... You I believe have earned that was, your uh, name, can opener, sir. <laughs> yes. I believe that was uh, four Piots. No, one, two, three, four, five Piots and Panzer Shrek all at once. Yeah. Uh, uh, glider was a uh, drop on the squad. right. Trying to take care of those 40s right there. Really need Zappers to. Sappers uh, with three Piots. How did you get three Piots and a Sapper? Oh, no, that's never mind. I picked up a lot of them dropped. Uh, yeah. You'll notice by the south southeast VP, there's a. There's a Piat right there, so... I mean, God, look at the map. It's just encrusted with, with naval warfare. <laughs> Absolutely. He's still got... Uh, he should be sending those out a lot more often, though, I think. It feels like he should be able to be dropping those... Oh, drop wow! Already on the off, I see that. It did quite a bit of damage, too. Yeah. And now we were just, just uh, alerted that you got... That uh, the enemy got crack infantry. Or sorry, uh, elite infantry. Elite, level yeah. three. Being flooded with Kazraps. Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> what did he say? We're being flooded with Kazraps? What the hell's a Kazrap? Your guess is as good as mine. Fire assault on the right. I just want to kill the Oswin. Just let me kill the Oswin. Lost the squad. Well, that's odd. Why is Inspired Assault going off on the right but not on the left? Huh. Good point. Might just be a graphical bug. Might be. Or already on the right, took out the Oxwin. See, with that, uh, with that already being, uh, the decoy already being, you know, 80 munitions, it's no, pretty the decoy is free. The, the regular already. Oh, I see what you're saying. The decoy artillery, that's real. <laughs> yep. The last man standing, Bridger, in the trench. Oh yeah, God. he shall not fall. Uh, 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 he, yeah, he makes it. Uh, that's Forrest Gump pulled. right there. Wrong war, but you know, yeah. wrong nationality, but that's him. Yeah, with uh, two percent life and a piot. Now, did it ever cross your mind the idea to get a um, an aid state? What do they call them? The field, the tr field medic station. Casualty clearing station. Casualty clearing station. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it it did. And uh, I've definitely altered my uh, build order against Wehrmacht a little bit oh. after this game. He's dropping it on his own guys. Yeah. Damaged engine on your headquarters. Wow, I didn't think a Nibelwerfer would get that when it's standing still. Yeah, a couple patches ago they made it so that all kind of like mortar-ish weapons have a chance to do a damage engine. But now you got nothing. I mean, the kill, killing the Ting Tiger was one thing, but now you've got nothing that's anti-infantry, and all he's got is infantry here. Yeah. The well, you know, you can always drop always another glider on the right-hand side and I spray. See that. You still need <laughs> some 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 lieutenants here to help these guys out. I think it would be the best thing to have. All I can do is really just lay that little bomb on the left side. I see that. I see that. I see that. I see nothing. Yep. They're not getting close enough. And uh, Knight's Cross with Inspired Assault on the right. Yeah, that's, uh, that makes me want to throw up. It stuck my grenade. <laughs> oh, one pops out, and he's still alive. <laughs> Live! Man, he, he totally could have won, too. Oh, but you guys pop out really quick. I didn't think the commandos Inspired were Assault on the left, over getting, over deep, getting artied again. Seizing territory. Little late. Yeah. Yeah, you really want to uh, put your spread your arty out. Don't stick it right next to each other, because I think it's uh, it's a little bit too easy to avoid. And uh, you got to be careful, because the the count cooldown on the decoy arty is 
a lot less than the cooldown on the regular RD, so you know, sometimes sometimes you want to just spread it out a little bit, a little bit more than I've been doing. Uh, there's a couple times where you know a, a smart player as, as this guy was, you know, he he knew that there was no RD coming down because it had just dropped you know, gotcha. 20 seconds earlier. And uh, I have no oh, HQ. Geez. No HQ indeed. I don't yeah. know how this is gonna last another couple of minutes here. <laughs> pop smoke. <laughs> yeah, they just and pop it, back it, into view. That actually makes them completely camouflage for six seconds, and I think they yeah. run at full speed too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really excellent ability. Uh, more already coming down. I think it's just decoy as the regular one. Come on, kill something. Oh. He didn't notice the regular one dropping after. Yeah. Well, he could drop a V1 right now and just end this on a bang. So I got my uh, headquarters command <laughs> truck again. Let's see. One Nebel Warfare killed 18, and the other one somehow only killed one. But I know those <laughs> earlier ones killed at least 10, 20 guys. Oh, look at the range on those. Did, did it used to be that long? I felt like it's a little bit shorter than that used to be. You know, I, I would have to agree with you. It might have been a little bit, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. Um, because I felt like I, from from the main base, I was barely able to, or from the southern base, I go, I feel like the last time I played with an evil warfer, it was barely able to reach the center of Sturzdorf, much less, you know, most of the way across Angaville. Yeah. So I guess we're exchanging our GGs here. Did he just say he does? Oh, that's why. He doesn't like playing against Panzer Elite is what he said. I got uh -oh. you. Oh. Imagine uh, what life was like without that. Oh, yeah. That's very nice, I got to say. Yeah, when my, when my, my ah, brother heard smoke. that, he pop smoke again. Ooh, pop smoke and then throw a grenade. That's a pretty interesting idea. And already one one final. You will not destroy my HQ move. <laughs> <laughs> I will die with dignity. With dignity, the way that victory points were designed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all over but the shouting. But uh, his uh, his you know, I I enjoyed the way that he he played. He he got a little bit from each tier. Did it very methodically and. Uh, Uses Nebel Warfers extremely effectively, yeah. and uh, uh, I gotta give the guy a little credit, a, a lot of credit. You know, he didn't, uh, he didn't, uh, he didn't go the tier three route that I was thinking, which was the old school way of thought. You know, I figured a Puma or a uh -oh. Doug would come out, but uh, glider, glider for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they used to be badass, but you're fighting tier three infantry now not just tier 3 infantry knights cross holders look tier man infantry. i needed to kill those diva workers if my <laughs> life depended on it <laughs> grenade for the win pop and smoke go 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 it's right over there get it oh man no cover no cover run till the last man <laughs> yeah but uh, oh, wow he's making it he's gonna make it he's on the road he's in negative cover but he's gonna make it yeah, Nebel Warfare is really pwned British. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Yeah, uh, there. Uh, you really got to get one. Now, one of those. He was mentioning that the Americans are having a hard time against the Panzer Elite, and actually, in the next patch, the one that's coming out soon, um, it's basically the last beta patch is now going to be applied to retail. That was not include, did not make it early enough to make it into retail. And part right. of the changes there was the bar has an improved damage output against soldier armor, which is what the Panzer mm -hmm. Grenadiers are. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. I think one uh, one thing to, to note that, a uh, little tip, actually, I was thinking about it. It doesn't really have anything to do with, with this as the game closes, but uh, if you're going to move your move your truck, just know that when you're moving them, you can, you can plan it so that you actually reinforce while it's on the move. I mean, well, you can yeah. reinforce while it's on the move, and also you can... Uh, you can, uh, what was I going to say? You can, uh, when you hit retreat, it doesn't retreat to where your HQ was. It'll retreat to where your HQ is. You know what I mean? Bridger, like, when you're moving your truck, it'll actually just retreat to your truck. So if you're wow. moving your truck across the field, it'll retreat to there. And that can be a really good way to uh, get your get your Tommy squads uh, a little bit closer to the action. So don't, don't be shy. Uh, 
Don't be shy to move your stuff. Yeah, and the, I'm, I'm... the only way I see that the Firefly actually working in that fight was, uh, is if you managed to get the King Tiger distracted shooting at your Piots or something, and the Firefly came up from behind and used its very long range to get off two or three shots and then get out of there before the King Tiger could respond. That would have been very, uh, very useful because it does, does massive damage, uh, especially if you hit the back of the King Tiger, but it's so vulnerable and just easily dies. Yeah, I remember in one of my games I uh, buttoned the uh, regular Blitzkrieg Tiger, and then I just, you know, used my extended range on the Firefly to hit it from far. Yeah, um, buttoning, but buttoning lowers their line of sight, it slows them yeah. down, and it slowly shuts down their different, um, their different Close ports the, of the guns. Their firing rate yeah. as well, yeah. One last glider attempt with the VPs ticking down. <laughs> but, he's uh, about to get it, he's about to get it, oh no! What was I gonna say? Nope. Yeah, it's uh, you re you really need to 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 use the button against that, and you should prepare probably with a button and some form of an anti tank gun would be really 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 important. Yeah, I was very yeah. impressed at the range of the what is the seventeen pounder anti tank gun. You put that thing down like if it was up here, um, let's say at this the strategic point in the north on the left hand side of the road there. You put it mm -hmm. there, it reaches at least all the way down to the other strap point, which is a little bit farther, I think, than even the American AT, and probably as far as that truck or the tree down at the bottom left there. It's a very long range on that AT gun, and it's got armor piercing. Yeah, I, I love that AT gun. It's it's your best friend on, on Ingeville. So, uh, you know, just like last year's fashion, you know, of course, default, I, had, I have to lose the, the show. You know, the show replay. 18. We had one on the show where that. I won. It was on some law. Now, that Nebel Warfare um, must be... Oh, that's right. It's 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 not Panzer Elite or American. It's uh, it's German. So, never mind. It's not a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, good show, sir. Thank you for giving us another replay to open up the retail opposing fronts with. Much appreciated to uh, be able to provide that service. Good, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, enough of us trying to, I don't know, out-polite each other. Let's just end the show here while we're still conscious. Thank you guys for tuning yeah. in to the Gamefire Network. Another Tales of Heroes finished up here. Send us your replays at talesof at gamefire.com. T-A-L-E-S-O-F at gamefire.com. That's right. Send us your replays as an attachment to the email address. I can't count the number of times per week. Actually, I can. It's at least two or three times per week somebody sends me an email, a forum PM, or a Gamefire PM saying, Hey, I've got this great replay. Here's all about it. How do I send it to you? To the email, talesof at gamefire.com. Okay? Let Thank me close guys. out the show, Bridger. All right. And that is why the Nebel Warfare is overpowered. Never thought Thank I'd you. hear that said. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>